Hey guys, so it's 1 a.m. and I just woke up from a very intense, very symbolic dream that's got me pretty shooken up in the middle of the night. And I just want to make a video to record it. It might be a personal dream and it could be a wide dream, broad dream for everybody. I'm going to lean toward it being a personal dream toward me. But you take the interpretation how you want. In this dream, it started out and I was in a vehicle drinking and driving and I got very dizzy and out of control. And I flipped over this vehicle and fled the vehicle and just ran from the police and they could not find me. But eventually I turned myself in and I said, look, I need help. Um, I need help. And so they took me and to my surprise, the police officer said, actually, Thomas, you're not drunk. Oh my God. The interpretation just came to me. Sorry, it's late. And I just figure out what the dream means. And, um, wow, that's powerful. Okay, so she said, you're not drunk, but she said, you do have a loose tooth. And she, the police officer grabbed my tooth right here and tried to pull it out. And I, it was sensitive. And I said, hey, hey, like easy. I'll, I'll just do this one myself. And so, and so she left and the police officers were in good spirits when they left me for some reason. And I went and along my way, I ran into two siblings and my mom. And we were in this place, like a, a cube that was sort of like a little hangout place. It felt like a house though. With this thick, thick glass on our slide door. And there was a little hole in the slide door and I accidentally dropped my phone. And I, and I asked my brother, I said, hey, can you grab my phone? And he said, yeah. So he went down. But as he was grabbing my phone, a robot kept passing by. And I don't know why, but I was annoyed. And I, I asked my brother, get the phone before the robot comes. <clears throat> and so he grabbed my phone and this robot happened to be passing at the right time. And I said, get out of here. Like, go away. You're annoying me. But all of a sudden that robot got really hostile. And I realized that the robot was in charge. And it was actually like... It was actually scary because it came up to the glass and it was like, are you talking to me? It was like taking pictures. It was like, it was a dominating, it was a dominating force. And I instantly knew, oh man, I should not have said anything to this robot. I should just let it do what it do. And all of a sudden this robot like had like this beeping sensor and like put it up against the glass and blew up. And I was like, whoa, what the, like it was escalating fast. This, this robot was basically like turned into like this, like, like police thing or something. It was like, it was like, it was ruling over us and I had broken the rule. And so my family like put like furniture up against the glass so that when it, they kept trying to blow up this thick glass that we had and it was pissed. And eventually, like, it left, but the glass was already broken. And all of a sudden, like, this strong wind came and pulled the whole glass off the side of the house. And then before I knew it, somehow we were on a ship. And the wind was so strong, it was pushing the whole ship. 
And I realized that there was other ships, there are other nationalities of ships. And other ships were mocking other ships and this and that. And the wind came and separated and blew my mom and my two brothers. All of us were divided. I, I was like on this mattress that was like flowing and it fell into the ocean. My feet were dangling into the ocean. And it was a terrifying sensation. Actually, someone like grabbed my foot in the water. It was a human being. It was terrifying. If you could just imagine, you know, being in the ocean on a floating mattress. And soon we all, soon I basically, I basically, um, I basically came to this place outside of the United States I was surrounded by very poor immigrants, man. And this like baby girl was like maybe four or five and she was picking up shoes on the floor. And it looked like a, like a landfill. Like we were all just in this landfill, really poor. And I said, I don't actually belong here. I'm a United States citizen. And some of them were like, oh man, you're lucky. You know, we're, we're always here in this poverty. And... I felt very sad and in the dream I was actually crying. I just felt so bad for these poor people and their dire situations. And I knew that God had stripped me of everything I had and brought me way back down low to, to remember the poverty of others and made me very sad. But eventually like a rescue ship came and I, I boarded on it and I, I bumped into my two brothers again. And I was so relieved, but I knew that I knew deep down I couldn't forget those people. I knew that I was leaving the poverty, but I was never to forget what, forget what I was seeing. And that just, it was such a powerful dream the way it was set up the colors, the absolute emotion that it just drew out of me from beginning to end. It was like, it was, it was a top 10 dreams that I've ever had. And the interpretation has come to me more and more the more I think about it. Well, in the beginning when I was in the truck, I was in this vehicle I was out of control. I thought I was drunk. The police officers thought, I, we all thought I was drunk, but I wasn't drunk. Has made me realize that I used to drink a lot and I was out of control, but now I don't drink. I haven't drank for months. I haven't seriously drank for maybe like a whole year. And you know, maybe God's trying to tell me that I'm not drunk, but I'm still out of control. Like, what What am I going to blame it on? What am I going to say that my reckless behavior is about? In the past, I had an excuse that I was drunk. But now I don't have an excuse. So maybe God is telling me that I'm out of control. And that I have no excuse. Which is very piercing because... I don't feel out of control. I I don't look at, you know, pornography. I'm like two 25 days clean of that. Yes, do I still look at women in lust? Sometimes, yes. You know, but I'm, it's something I diligently work at. And I've gotten a lot better. Um, so being out of control is something I'm going to have to think about and, and really meditate on. But the other dream was when I dropped my phone. And then, no, it's the same dream, but the other part of this dream was when I dropped my phone and this robot was coming just to, just to straight, you know, harass us. You know, and I, I was sitting there and I, I, I said something to the robot. I said, go away, you're leaving, leave us alone. I taunted the robot and there was absolutely no grace. Like immediately that thing just got into uh, an aggressive stance. And throughout my whole life, I've always had grace. I've always made mistakes. 
I've always said things, but grace, there's always been a grace where there's forgiveness. There's like, there's no escalation. There's always been a nice, beautiful grace in my life. And maybe I'm taking that for granted. And maybe I remember in the dream as I was being attacked, you know, my family being attacked by this robot. I remember saying it out loud, like, the grace of my life is over. And um, the grace is over. It didn't feel like the grace was coming to a close. It felt like the grace was over. And now every single action I made that was negative, there was harsh consequences, which I still think is very interesting. Because I've never been more well-mannered in my life than I am right now. I've, I've never been more well-mannered. And so that's another thing I'm going to have to think about. And maybe, and there's, there's, this, there's this feeling I get that the grace of the entire world could be coming to a close. The grace period of America or where I live, you know, that grace period is over. I don't know. That's something I'll have to pray and ponder on. And, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was a, it was one, it was a interesting dream from beginning to end. And then being on the shipping, the ship, and flying away from my family was a horrible sensation. Being uncontrollably dragged away from, you know, my mom and my brothers that I love dearly. It was a horrible sensation to be alone in the ocean and cast upon a shore, a landfill of used goods and poverty and people that were lurking around looking for hope looking for a savior. When I showed up and I was an American around all these Mexicans and all kinds of different races, they just were looking to me to help them. But I just couldn't wait to get out of there and get back to my life. And that's the sad part is I, as I knew that I needed to remember them, I needed to do something about it. And that's a personal choice that we all make you know, when you go out and spend your money on on fancy things. That there's actually people out there that have it a lot worse than you. And they're dying and they're looking for hope. A savior. You know, but, but we as a society, we need our iPhone 16. You know? That was a really horrible thing to, to see. I just woke up shook from this dream, just completely shook. Um, might sound like I'm being dramatic, but it was a powerful, it was a, it was, it was like I was thrown in it. I was really in it. You know, I didn't feel like a dream. It felt real. So that's another thing I'm going to have to ponder on. I, I, I'm somebody that really likes to achieve success. And I need to always remember not to forget the poor and the cold and the lonely, the lowest people that are really suffering the most. I do get kind of consumed in what I'm doing in my life. And I can forget pretty fast that there's some serious need out there. So with that being said, this feels like a personal message to me, but it could mean I do have this sense of a grander end of grace at the same time. I have this in my previous videos, I've mentioned that I think 
a hardness, a hard time is coming in 2025. I don't know why. I've just had this impression over and over and over again to prepare for 2020, 2025. So I need to take all this into consideration and take action. And I wanted to share this video to see if it could help one person. And because this is my channel and my record of my life. With that being said, thanks for watching.